So I just picked up the bike after having it uh, looked over by Cole. And Cole's put on a set of his custom headers and he's whacked it on the dyno, got it all dyno tuned for me. My God, what a difference. Holy Toledo. So basically it's had a full stage one done. The difference in the sound is, awesome. it sounds awesome. But the power is crazy. I can't believe the difference in the power, just by a stage one. I know everybody says yeah, bang for your buck, and I've had stage twos done before, but this has really, really brightened the bike up. It must have been running shit before, because, and I thought it was okay, but uh, wow, what a difference. Holy crap. Listen to this. Rightio, so a few weeks ago you would have known, I've, I, you, know, you would have seen now, I've, I uh, get, had the bike down to Cole and Cole did a bit of work on it. Basically what he did was he did a proper stage one for me. He's, uh, he put in uh, header pipes and the main thing was done, I had it dynoed and the, the, re, the, yeah, the difference is ridiculous. It's honestly, uh, well I went down to uh, Warnable, you would have seen one of those videos already and uh, so I went down with John, and John's basically got the same the same engine, everything set up as mine. But he he hasn't hit, had his dyno yet. Pretty much on a tank of juice, I reuse around about a I don't know, maybe a fifth less, maybe a touch less than that. But still, it's it's a fifth less. But the power and everything uh, is just so much better. It's ridiculous. I can't believe how much it's woken the bike up. Now that's just a stage one. So um anyway let's go talk to cole see exactly what they did i'm not 100 percent sure what they did but uh suffice to say it's made a huge difference it's all been done up since i was here last i'm good how are you that's fine all right so i've just popped in to see cole and we're just talking about how much better the bike is um so I've been riding it for probably, I don't know, eight weeks now. And um, so Cole, what's the, like, I know, I know, you, I know we donate it and um, you, you put these uh, pipes on your, the, the, you, you make your own pipes, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We um, make it so they don't radiate as much heat yep. as um, ones with um, cats in them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we'd never make them illegal. Would you? No, no. But it's just all about a free flowing exhaust. Harley have never been more susceptible to exhaust than the, than the Milwaukee Eighters. It's quite staggering. In the old days, you know, the old the older bikes, shovels and evos weren't that. But we didn't care. We just wanted them loud. Yep. And because they were loud, everybody thought they were going faster or harder. But the Milwaukee Eights are really, really susceptible to the exhaust. You got to get that right. So, so with the with the, I mean, so basically what you did for mine uh, was you put it like a proper stage one in it, and we had it dyno. Like, and I was saying to you that you know, uh, you guys, if you don't know, you know, John Aqua, who you would have seen on a lot of the vlogs, he's got a, he's got the same engine as what I've got in mine. And I was saying we went, we did a trip down to Warnable, and I was using a fifth, around about a fifth less fuel per tank than what he was, and he hasn't had his dyno. I, I just couldn't believe how much of a difference it made. Well, they're running efficiently, so. It's all about the correct air fuel ratios at the correct revs, and I'm not a dyno tuner. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on it, but yeah. it's all about tuning them properly so they run the best. It's just like giving a highly tuned athlete a pair of gumboots to run in. Yeah, you know, if they're not, if he can't run properly, he's not going to. So, so is that so? I just made that analogy. Up to, <laughs> if I'd have thought about it, I could have. Made it. <laughs> Anyway. So Steph is the guy that does all the tuning. Steffy, big yeah, Steffy, yeah. yeah. So Michael Webb, our general manager now, he, he was taught to dyno. Um, I've taught a few guys, I've had a few guys taught, and uh, Mick became the general manager here, so he, he was too busy, but he taught Steffy. And out of the four guys that I've had taught, Steffy's the only real natural. You've got to have a feel for it. Yeah. You've got to have a mechanical 
feel and a mechanical ear. Yeah. Stiffy's now a master tech and he's the guy that won the wins all the competitions. He's going really well. But Brian Lennon is, in my opinion, Brian Lennon's up at um, Donga Albury. He's got a business up there called Eastern Big Twin. Okay, yeah. Brian was in Packenham for years and years, and in my opinion, him and a guy called Jim Darshet out of Sydney are the two best engine, you know, Harley Davidson tuners that I've come across. Okay. So um, Brian's very kindly spent time with my guys and taught them. So um, we thank him. He's great. And if you're in the Albury area, he's your man. So these are the pipes here. These, these, these are your pipes that, that you make yourself. So Cole makes his own pipes. So th th these are yours, correct? Yeah, as I said before, mate, if I'd have known you were coming to film, I'd have cleaned it up a little bit, but, uh... <laughs> hey, this, this is actually cleaner than I saw last time. This is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a lathe here and I'm making stuff. Oh, a lot of people, get, like, you want the TIG welds, want them all to look sexy. Well, I put the original heat shields back on them. So that that's actually the secret of making them at a reasonable price, to put the heat shields back on. If you've got to send them away and have them coated, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. Um, these, this is set up as two into one, but I'll put the branch pipe off the side down in here. That's a jig for that, it'll cut the branches into there and that feeds the other muffler. And this particular, I've got to make one because the customer doesn't want it to be two into two. He wants a genuine two into one. So I'll put a fake piece on there just to hold the other exhaust up. Um, and that's basically that for those, they, but they do work. We've dynoed them with without, we've mucked around with, with um, links, primary links. The longer you can keep this, the better they are, but you're, you bet you're limited to where the crossover comes in. So. That's the maximum length we can get as a, just as a standard run. So the next thing for me, we, we, we were talking before about uh, putting, a, putting a cam in, yeah, to do it like take it up to stage two. Yep. And obviously I do a lot of two up touring and um, what's it, well, predominantly two, two up. So I'll put in a torque cam, yep. yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert on the Milwaukee eights. The old 259s and the 266s and the two cams I was okay with. But yep. But uh, best to talk to Webby about the um, cam selection. Yep. And all of, all of our recommendations are totally based on experience yep. there. And the biggest part is to try and have the customer be honest with you and, and, and uh, you just, and they very rarely are. <laughs> you say, where do you ride the bike? 90% of the time, well 90% of the time the bike's sitting at you know, 1950 or 2000 RPM in six gear. Yep. That's the truth. But they all tell you, oh, I flog it, mate, I want to ride it. So we get a bit, people get a bit carried away with tuning them for the top end. We do that as well. But we're not really that interested in the high-end numbers. It's more about rideability. I was just going to say. So, previous experience with me is you, you want it. You want it to be rideable. You, you don't want it to be that lumpy that when you're going around roundabouts, you're wanting to go all the time and it's throwing you off. You want it to be. Yeah, well, that's your cam over. Like does that the yeah. big cams? It's quite well, the first time it happens to you. You shit yourself. You, yeah. You, you'll be down to first gear and no throttle on at all, and it'll climb up onto the cam and go whoom. Yeah. Right. Boy, that gives you a fright when you're not ready for it. So. <laughs> Especially in the wet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting. I was talking to Dan Porteous. He's the head mechanic or head technician over at Gasoline Alley in, in Red Deer, Alberta. I was talking about the, you know, the wank fact numbers on the dyno thing that everybody chases. And they don't even give the customers a printout over there. And the, pe and the customers don't even ask. They're more interested in doing it by the pants, you know, the seat of their pants dyno. They ride the bike, they love it, and they talk about it from there. But they're not interested in the top end numbers, which is a really good way to, to be. And I, I've got to be honest, they handed me the, the piece of paper here. I, I don't even know what I'm looking at. I had to get out a web and say, what, what exactly am I looking at here? So I, so I don't look like a freaking idiot. But, yeah, yeah. but uh, like I said, for me, I, I just want it to, to feel good when I'm riding it. And that's, I can tell you from experience, it has made such a hell of a difference to the bike. A, the sound sounds fantastic. Um, we make our own mufflers here too, so but that's another story. Yep. So. Yeah, the, the sound's fantastic. The feel, I thought the power was, was much, much better. Um, and look, I had a couple other bikes ride and just thought it felt beautiful to ride. And just the power, especially in the M8, the, the, the delivery is right the way through the, the, the whole power, the, the rev range, isn't it really? Well, because people got to remember too that Harley Davidson have to meet the EPA requirements for particular, I don't know why they don't just refuse to sell them to California. It'd save us all a bunch of trouble. Well, I don't know why they just don't cut California off and let it float out into the ocean. Exactly. <laughs> There's no good country music comes out of there. There's just nothing really positive. There's the blondes and bikinis and that, but I think they got them in Florida. Yeah. They're just a lot older. Yeah. <laughs> in God's waiting room. But anyway, so they've got to pass all the EPA rules, and the same with Australia. They've got to put the bikes in to be inspected and get complied. 
So they they come from the factory very, very lean, so they pass the emissions. And um, then Harley sell some of their tuning products, I think Screaming Eagles made a comeback. And um, you download, we used to download maps that Harley recommended. I don't do that anymore. Um, if, you know, we just don't do that anymore. We don't, after doing some dyno tuning, we find that they're not up to speed. They're really not. Is that why, because they, they run, so is that why they're, they can be hot? Because they run so lean? Yep. Yeah, very much. And so people put a free flowing exhaust on. The standard thing used to be you'd say to the customers, well, you can put make it sound like a Harley, but don't touch the air cleaner. And the, whole, the theory behind that with the two cameras was if it can't get the air in, it can't get it out, so it won't matter. And then you can do the air cleaner, put a fancy looking air cleaner, but leave the pipe standard. Once again, it can get it in, but it can't get it out. When you do both, it can both get it in and get it out, and now it needs more fuel because it's you can, the air can flow through a lot easier. Well, that's one thing I found that the bike's nowhere near as hot as it was previously. Oh, well, that might be something to do with this exhaust design yeah. too. That's another. Yeah. Not that we advocate breaking the EPA rules. No, no, no. Well, it's completely above board. Yeah. No, no it's all completely good. separate to Geelong Harley too. These e bikes. exactly right. Exactly right. Well, mate, appreciate. It. Like I said, guys, if you if you want to do something like come and see Cole because uh, I've already what, Johnny Ack was already in here, and uh, any other flogs out there want to do this sort of stuff, uh, come and see Cole. I'm sure he'll look after you. And um, flogs, oh, flogs, yeah, flogs. Uh, it, look, I, I've got to say, it's uh, a pleasure coming down here all the time. You, you, you feel really welcome, and uh, it's an, another another reason to come down here. But the main reason is if you want your bike running absolutely top notch, bring it in here because it's running spot on. I think the difference with us in most shops still is the fact that we actually have a love for the product. It's a passion. Yep. Look, when I don't make money out here mucking around with welders and grinders and shit, but we can improve the product. We like to do so. So. And we ain't a big corporate store, we're just a little family owned, Andrew and I own it, that's it, tiny. And that's what we found with all the... Uh, you want to buy a jacket? A fucking jacket to fit you would be fucking huge, we could you make have a bit of money out of it. You, 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 you have to kill a couple of cows. <laughs> <laughs> that's what? another story. I've got a couple of cows, that's another story. <laughs> I wouldn't talk about it, Elaine. Like that. Oh! I'm going, that's it, that's done. <laughs>